Kim Jong-un. During his visit to South Korea, the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, was traveling in a procession of armored Mercedes. Behind his limousine, 12 bodyguards were running, protecting the car from the sides and behind, looking a little strange and funny, we won't deny it. In general, presidential cars are accompanied by a caravan of motorcyclists, and more often than not, the car travels without an additional escort because it's already pretty armored. However, in Kim's case, everything's pretty different. The leader of North Korea is really concerned about his safety and apparently prefers bodyguards on foot. After all, they're not distracted by riding the motorcycle and focus all their attention on protecting the life and health of Kim, who prefers to be protected by as many people as possible. 15,000 personal bodyguards protect Kim. Of course, not all at the same time, but the numbers speak for themselves. Kim also has a personal guard, the so-called Protection Command, which includes 120,000 people. Not only do they protect the leader, but they also defend Pyongyang forming a real army. But why does he need so much protection? The fact is that his father and grandfather suffered dozens of assassination attempts, so it's not surprising that Kim treats his security issues with great care. Recep Tayyip Erdogan the president of Turkey is also an expert in personal security. His bodyguards are not only found in the great processions that travel the streets at an incredible speed, illuminating the road with flashing lights, Among those responsible for the security of Recep Tayyip Erdogan are snipers who watch over everything that happens from above, ready to open fire at any time if something dangerous threatens the president. By the way, do you think all heads of state use business class armored cars? No, Erdogan sometimes moves in a presidential bus, of course with a caravan and snipers on the roof. And who knows how they manage to not fall on turns? Well, the president and his wife, hiding behind thick armored glass, greet the citizens of Turkey. Perhaps this form of travel seems safer to them. Shinzo Abe Japan's youngest prime minister in history, Shinzo Abe, is in fact the country's head of state. Although this country is a constitutional monarchy, the old emperor Akihito performs ceremonial functions only. If you compare his protection with the prime minister's protection, everything becomes crystal clear. Abe travels with a long procession of high-tech armored vehicles, accompanied by a personal guard. And if he has to pass through a busy road, security literally comes out of the windows to ask other cars to slow down and let the prime minister through. Yeah, no roads blocked. Ah, remember the guards who ran after Kim Jong-un's car at the beginning of the video? It seems that this strange tradition also exists in Japan, but in this case, we kind of understand why. It'd be difficult for several motorcycles and the prime minister inside the car to ride along a narrow street. Queen Elizabeth II Although the Queen of Great Britain, like the Emperor of Japan, is not the ruler of the country, large amounts of money are spent on her protection. It's no coincidence either. The assassination attempts on Elizabeth II occur with alarming frequency. For that reason, the Queen, like no other, needs reliable protection. Inside Buckingham Palace, the guards are responsible for this, serving day and night. And when Her Majesty travels outside her residence, she always has company, including her personal and police guard. And it's not for nothing. For example, in 2011, two British teenagers threw raw eggs at the Queen's Rolls Royce. One of them hit the windshield and the other on the car door. Fortunately, no one was injured, of course, and the royal peace violators were quickly arrested. But the attacks could be more serious, and the Queen is therefore always accompanied by bodyguards. Alpha Conde well, it's time to look at Africa and African politicians. For example, let's talk about Alpha Conde. Since 2010, he's been president of Guinea, and despite an assassination attempt in 2011, it appears that he's not hiding inside an armored car. There he is, standing up and greeting his citizens, as if he weren't afraid. But the state's leader's sense of tranquility is spoiled by 10 motorcyclists at the beginning of the caravan, a group of bodyguards ready to jump out of their cars at any moment, and several military tree trucks. Oh, seriously, just look at how many there are. Donald Trump 
They say that even before he was elected president of the United States, when Donald Trump was a mere billionaire, he only hired former Secret Service agents and members of the Navy SEALs Special Forces for his personal protection. Not surprisingly, during the inauguration, the presidential caravan was accompanied by an impressive number of agents. According to CNN, before taking office, the security of Trump and his family cost New York City authorities more than $1 million a day. That number, of course, has not decreased. And with all that money, you can afford to travel in caravans of any length and hire any number of Secret Service agents. Look at them. These guys obviously know what they're doing. By the way, in addition to protection, high-level US politicians receive an alias from the Secret Service. Thus, Donald Trump is known as the Magnate, and his wife Melania is the Muse, apparently for secrecy. Vladimir Putin the security of the president of the Russian Federation is the responsibility of the Federal Protective Service, a powerful and secret intelligence service in modern Russia. The official data on the number of agents is completely classified. According to some reports, which unfortunately can't be confirmed, about 50,000 officers are now engaged in the protection of the president and other major tasks. These people not only accompany Putin throughout his travels, but also ensure that the streets along which the president will move are as safe as possible. Despite the long list of responsibilities and duties, the main task of the Federal Protective Service is to protect the so-called number one officer. To date, the agents have managed to prevent several assassination attempts of the head of state, but details of these operations are not yet available to the public. Xi Jinping the security of China's top leaders, including President Xi Jinping, is the responsibility of the Central Security Bureau of the Communist Party of China. The total number of employees and soldiers exceeds 8,000, divided into seven functional groups, each of which performs different tasks. To become a security agent, you need to pass a very strict selection process. The main criteria are political security, physical training, educational level, and strict discipline. But even despite the impressive army of trained bodyguards, there are rumors that Xi Jinping is constantly increasing the demands on his guards. Personal security offers must have more than six years of political and professional training in a special detachment of bodyguards, as well as being able to safely handle at least eight types of firearms, and in particular be able to easily fire at the enemy simultaneously with both hands. Each guard always carries three different guns, two knives, and one packet of smoke powder, all for the safety of the Secretary General. No wonder they look so tough when they accompany the leader's car. By the way, did you notice the half-open doors on the other cars? It seems that the other agents are hidden inside, ready at any time to react to the danger, as the number of Xi Jinping's personal security agents, according to some data, is at least a dozen. Alassane Ouattara since 2011, the presidential seat of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire has been held by Alassane Ouattara, a prominent Ivorian politician. But we, of course, will not discuss his state decisions, so let's take a look at Alassane's security agents. Like any head of country, the president of the Ivory Coast is escorted by police on motorcycles, and the car moves in a procession. But above all, we like the agents who travel on the steps. They seem to be responsible for the safety of the president as he cheerfully greets the crowd from the car hatch. The Pope Although the Pope is a spiritual guide, he's also the head of the Vatican. And the Vatican, in turn, is considered an independent state, and surely have heard of his protection. The Swiss guards are too memorable to forget. However, they are not members of any theater group, but true soldiers who serve to guarantee the security of the Pope's sacred person and his residence. They are trained, 
armed and know exactly what they must do to preserve the peace of the head of the Catholic Church. The guards have to deal not only with curious tourists. Remember, for example, the attack against John Paul II in 1981? Today, Pope Francis is the pontiff and is open to the people much more than his predecessors. However, this does not mean that you don't need protection against various unpleasant surprises. During his visits to different countries, the bodyguards follow the Pope in the Pope-mobile, following him, ensuring the safety of the pontiff, and helping him to contact the flock. Do you want the Pope to bless your son? Well, most likely you'll need to pass him through a smiling guard. However, Francis is full of surprises and at any time can decide to approach people by himself. Imagine how stressful it can be for the security service. 